This is the uh, BC-375 World War II transmitter. I uh, have it here set up to uh, see what kind of power levels we get and how it works. I took off the, uh, the cover for the tube so you can see them. We'll put them on later. This is the tuning unit box. We have a tuning, tuning unit box that covers uh, 3 to 4.5 megahertz, so that's uh, the 80 meter band fits in there. And right now I have it set for 3885, that is the AM boat anchor frequency, as you might know. We're dumping everything into the uh, dummy load, and we have a bird watt meter with a 250 watt slug to show you what uh, kind of power we get from this uh, radio, this transmitter. Now, the uh, radio is usually used for long wire antennas and that kind of stuff, but it does tune into 50 ohms. So uh, I did uh, accomplish that. It actually goes fairly easy. Here you can see uh, how I did that. This is the, uh, this is the antenna terminal uh, block ground. This is the uh, uh, antenna. It goes to the uh, bird watt meter. And this is a receiver output. The, uh, the transmitter has a transmit receive relay in there, so it is possible to uh, to uh, hook up a receiver and have it switched the RF switched through the uh, relay that's in this transmitter. Transmitter has uh, uh, four uh, VT4C tubes, also called uh, 211 tubes. VT4C was the military designation and one VT25, also called number 10. I don't know if it shows up. And uh, the way that is done is this is a, uh, it's a, it's a MOPA as it's called, uh, MO tuned PA. So this is the oscillator tube. This is the transmit tube. These two are the uh, push-pull tubes for the modulator. It's a plate modulated radio. And this fulfills multiple functions. It uh, gives you the side tone, it is the microphone preamp, and it also uses, it's switched as an audio oscillator when you switch the uh, radio to tone, that was tone CW. So there is carrier CW, tone CW, and voice. And when you switch it to tone CW, you basically just generate a tone that is transmitted as AM, and you can then uh, uh, key that with a Morse key. This is a test key. This is, as I said, the two box. This is the uh, uh, VFO tuning. This is the plate tuning. This whole section is the uh, antenna tune section. It's a roller inductor as an antenna current meter. Uh, there is a, uh, a series coil for very uh, long antennas and lo low frequencies, and a, uh, a inductor that can be tapped. This is the uh, coupling. Uh, the antenna circuit being coupled to the tank circuit, which is inside this TU box. Uh, here you see uh, uh, what actually is hooked up in terms of power. This is the HT. It's a single pin connector with thick uh, insulated cable. This cable here it goes to the uh, uh, ground, the, the negative voltage I should say, and to the um, filament uh, uh, voltage. We use a DC power supply for that and for the uh, HT that's a thousand volt that's needed I have two of these PS500 XT electrophoresis uh, power supplies that are in series and together they give me a thousand volt they're regulated so this gives the transmitter a regulated voltage which, uh, which makes the modulation much better than the way it was in the original setup with the dynamotor and the voltages were all over the place when you AM modulate the radio. Let's uh, turn on the filament voltage and see what happens. Now these are already running and let's switch this on. As you see these tubes are bright cathode tubes. They um, give their emission with a very bright glow. It's uh, thoriated tungsten uh, filaments, and that was popular before World War II. This, this design is from about, well, this particular design from 38, but there was a predecessor which was almost the same transmitter without the um, 
uh, antenna tuning section that was designed in the early uh, uh, 30s, late 20s. So this is really an old design, but it works quite well. So we're all ready to go. We have our uh, voltage here, 23.8. I got 7.9 amps in uh, uh, filament current. Here you can see the uh, filament meter. I have to set that at the uh, exactly at the right point because these tubes do not like too high voltage or too low. If they get too low a voltage, they also get damaged. Uh, here we have the plate current, and uh, what I'm using for a microphone. It might look a little bit weird, but this is a uh, Motorola uh, carbon simulating microphone because this this transmitter requires a carbon microphone. The ones that come with it. The uh, military ones are always uh, in poor condition, uh, 60 or 70 years after the fact. And if you use one of those uh, uh, carbon simulating microphones, almost every Motorola mic is like that, with a little transistor circuit, an electret microphone, then you don't have that problem. Well, let's see what we get. I am transmitting now. That's the plate current when I modulate. One, two, three, four, five. And the antenna current, you're probably thinking, why is that so low? It is about 1.4 uh, amps. And the meter really starts at 2. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, this meter is highly nonlinear. It starts at 2 amps. And so you're wondering why is the current so low while the power is actually quite good. The radio gives off here right now 80 watts as you can see. And it's specified for 70 at this frequency so it's doing quite well. The reason is because the, uh, the unit is tuned into 50 ohms. And if you do the math, uh, 100 watts into 50 ohms is square root 2. It's one, about 1.4 amps and uh, that's why that is so low that's actually normal and you wonder why is this meter going all the way to 8 amps but that's because this transmitter was designed to uh, work with completely different antennas long wires and stuff with with different impedances and for those antennas those kind of antennas the current can be much higher so that's the uh, the reason so as you see works quite well Let's listen to the uh, modulation. For that I need to get a, uh, a receiver. Okay, I have my Yaesu FT817 at 3885, 3886. And uh, let's see how it sounds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, amplitude modulation from the BC375. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That sounds very good actually. Amplitude modulation from the uh, DC 375. And the reason why it sounds so well is obviously because of the plate modulator. I mean, more power is, is put into the modulator than the actual PA tube. So this radio put a heavy emphasis on the uh, modulation. And uh, it works quite well as you can see. So uh, that's our BC 375 aircraft transmitter. Let's uh, put a cover over the tubes and you can see what it looked like for the soldiers that were uh, sitting in their super fortresses ready to go to Germany to be, to be shot down. Not a fun job. So let's put the cover over the tubes. Alright, now we have the transmitter really as it was in the, uh, in the plane. And uh, if you look carefully you can still see the uh, tubes uh, Glow behind there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That still works. And uh, that's basically how it was operated. Now, one thing I want to show you is because this, this radio uses triodes, this transmitter uses two uh, triodes one for the oscillator, one for the uh, PA. So, those need to be the PA needs to be neutralized, otherwise. Uh, it's not going to work very well. And that is something that most hams don't do well when they use this radio on the boat anchor frequency. What you see here is the um, neutralizing cap. 
and when you have a, a, a tuning unit box that is not having the same serial number as the transmitter that means that needs to be uh, readjusted and I'll show you how that works actually it works uh, uh, simple the thing is when you modulate this transmitter and the, uh, the neutralization is not set right then there will be a frequency modulation component on the on the carrier which you don't want of course you want it to be AM and nothing else and the uh, FM component uh, can be minimized by setting this correctly now in order to do that we'll just switch this radio to uh, frequency modulation and then I can set that for minimum uh, FM as I can monitor it here on this uh, receiver now if we set it to tone that makes the tuning easier because if I modulate it's hard to hear the FM if I tone modulate with a constant tone which is already built into this transmitter as I told you earlier it's much easier to do than I just tune this neutralization cap for minimum uh, uh, audio output on my uh, FM uh, on my FM receiver so let's do that and uh, then you know how to uh, do that if you have a BC375 yourself alright first we need to uh, loosen this uh, lock mechanism which is done now, now I can turn it uh, this is the uh, this is the tone in uh, AM mode for the radio so I'm gonna put the radio now in FM mode and this is what you hear in FM so let's do our uh, tuning You can clearly hear where we are at minimum. So it was already at minimum, of course, but uh, this is the correct setting. And that's how you set the uh, neutralizing uh, cap for the, uh, for the BC375. Now remember, if you have a uh, tuning unit, that does ha that has a different serial number than a radio then that's what you would need to do and of course most people have uh, most people have uh, uh, to, to you boxes that came from other radios so I would assume that if you have this transmitter you probably would have to do this as well but this is an important uh, setting uh, if you don't set this right then the modulation sounds horrible and uh, this actually makes it sound quite well as you heard earlier uh, this is uh, the way to do that. Now, it's important to know that you only need to set that once. It's independent of the uh, of the VFO frequency. Uh, that is the good news. It's basically a bridge circuit. If you look uh, if you look at the circuit diagram for this radio, you can recognize the bridge circuit, where you basically balance out the grid to plate capacitance that the triode has. So this basically neutralizes that out. Hence the name so that you can't have any feedback from the uh, PA output back to the oscillator which otherwise would create that frequency modulation effect that you don't want alright so I thought that was probably a good thing to tell you that was, uh, that was it the uh, BC375 transmitter aircraft transmitter used in the flying fortresses during World War II was mostly used with the BC348 receiver I have that one as well but I need to set that up make another video for that and uh, looks great with the tubes as you might know these tubes are very much in demand, in demand by these uh, audio files these people that uh, they basically have cornered the market for these things so the prices went up tremendously that's kind of a bummer but uh, you can still get them, but you got to pay the price. That's the bad news. And they believe they belong in this transmitter. They don't belong in some kind of fancy, shiny chassis amplifier. This is where these tubes belong. The BC375. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. As you see, works great. 
excellent modulation. Thank you for watching this video.